we got this question a lot today, and we've been asked in the past, but you know, since Darius is on, we'll ask again to you know help people clarify and understand this. This is from Jim in Austin. Uh, please explain differences between narrow, straight, and deep quads. How do you mm -hmm. how do you define them mathematically? And, and then, where exactly is each zone in the quad? Quadrant chart. I've reread all the Hedge University materials, but can't find these three terms defined. Yeah, that's because every time it's funny. Every time I'm on the macro show, I get the same question. Yeah, we need to put this. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll at, probably on Hedge Edu. Probably do a video. Of, yep, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So um, go to slide six, Eric. Um, so in terms of how we've uh, constructed the conditional factoring back test to include the depth into the quadrant, um, I initially uh, calculated as you know the sum of the the deltas in. Um, you know, partitioning the deltas, uh, the sum of the CPI and GDP deltas in, in quartile terms, but the reality is the CPI deltas don't really matter. Um, what really matters is how much you slow or accelerate in GDP growth terms. And so if you think about the absolute value of the, of the y-axis figure, and, you know, if that's in the first quartile, i.e. it's a narrow, a small absolute value, it's a narrow quad, one, two, three, or four. And if the absolute value is a very large delta, uh, i.e. like 2Q20 or 2Q21 is projected to be, you know, that's in the upper quartile, that's, that's a deep quad. Um, so again, it's really just about how, how much growth uh, accelerates or decelerates, because that, that, that's the real big factor in terms of explaining asset market performance. Okay. Um, should we treat natural gas with the same caution as W... Hey. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Hey, sorry, and, and just one final thing on this. I mean, yep. you know, pr pr prior to... We haven't, you think about the, the, the sine curve of U.S. growth or European growth for that matter, or Japanese growth for that matter, or even Chinese growth. They're all, you know, they're all bounded. You know, they're all stochastic stationary processes to some degree, um, you know, with varying means. But the reality is, is, you know, we haven't really had to talk about massive slowdowns or massive accelerations. I mean, the amount of decel we saw in phase one, I mean, it's the biggest deceleration we've ever seen going back to as far as we can get the data. I assume it's, as far, it's the biggest decel we've seen since the Great Depression. Um, in so much that the big, the, the, the phase two bounce in the data, you know, it's one of the biggest, deepest, deep quad, you know, one, two, whatever you want to call it, um, intervals that we've ever seen. I mean, the, the, so go back to that chart on slide six. I've, I, you know, I've never in my, in, in, as long as we've been doing this, I've never talked about the length of those black lines. Like, we, no one ever even looks at them. They always look at the, where the dots are. Look how big and long those rays are. I mean, that's the whole point of this process is the whole point of this exercise is to say, hey, this is really big. This is really small. Like this matters. Like this, this stuff really matters. And historically it's mad at the asset market. So we need to get that right too.